Mr. Snyder here with the last step in the grade 9 orientation trailer. We're going to turn this timeline now into a video file. Right now this is not a video file. All this is is a set of instructions to the computer to tell it the how to manage the video files that we've added to our timeline, the effects we've added, the music and audio levels that we've adjusted. This is just a set of instructions. Now what we have to do is do the process called exporting and then it encodes it into a video file. I'll get into encoding when we get into the file, the, sorry, the program that actually does it. So what do we need to do first? There's three steps. First, you need to make the timeline active. Select it, you've got the gold bar around it. Second, what you need to do is go down to the end of your project there. Oh, look at this. I've got extra video clips and a title up here that I, it's not part of my uh, video. I don't want this to be part of my video or have a chance that it'll get added to my video. So click, drag, let go. I've selected all of those clips and titles now. Hit delete. Scroll down further, make sure there's nothing. Yeah, nothing else down there. Good. Okay, so now I've cleaned off the end of my timeline. The last step is to take this work area. I'm just going to misadjust it first. The work area is defined by this gray space, and these are the beginning of the workspace, that marker, and the end of the workspace, this marker. Okay, you've got to make sure the workspace is stretched right across your project. So I'm going to take the beginning workspace marker and drag it, and it snaps right to the very beginning of the project, right before the black video you put in. Then I'm going to take the ending marker, drag it, and I'm going to drag it to the end of my project. Now you have to be a little careful here. See how it's snapping to the end of the green screen clip? Three uh, white triangles. We want to actually take it a little bit more. Single, single triangle now, it's snapping to the end of the black video you've added. Okay? So if you have trouble seeing that, just hit plus plus and it'll expand around there. So there you go. Now you can see it. Good. Okay, minus minus. So now I've defined the area that I want to include as part of my video file. So what do I do? We go to File, Export, Media. And notice I can select Media. If by chance that's grayed out, it's likely because you forgot or somehow clicked off of the timeline. This is no longer active. The Effects Controls panel is active. So when I go to File, Export, Media is grayed out. See that? Oh, that's your little cl clue that perhaps, oh, I've got to select my timeline. Somehow I got off of that. There we go. Just click anywhere on it. Makes it active. File, export, media. And now what happens is you get this uh, program that opens up in Premiere called the encoder. It's Adobe encoder. And what this will do is a whole bunch of mathematics to turn this set of instructions into an actual video file based on the settings that you put in. Now, first thing, look, make sure it's fitting this window here. The video resolution's the same as this window. You don't have any black bars, top, bottom, or sides or anything. The next thing, you need to make sure that the part that's going to actually be the video is within that work area that you've just defined. So work area is what you want. There are other choices. Don't pick them. Keep it work area. Next thing, you go to the top right here and format. There are several different formats or flavors if you want. Think of like ice cream has a whole bunch of flavors. Video file formats have a whole bunch of flavors. The flavor we're going to use is called H.264. Click it. Okay, and that's the encoding format. There you go. It says it right there when I roll over it. Okay, preset. It's saying, what size is your video frame? What's this really, this video is going to be played? How do I size this? Click it and look, I've got, is it for an Android phone or a tablet? No. Is it for a, an Apple iPad? No. Apple TV? No. Let's keep going. Oh, HD. That's your clue. HD means high definition. That's what we want. We want it for a high definition television um, screen. So what we're going to do is pick, look at this. HD, high definition, 1080 pixels, vertical, okay? And P means progressive scan, not pixels. Okay, I'll get to that in just a second. 29.97 is the frame rate. There are 30 frames per second, short form is FPS. And 29.97 is a technical thing, but we, it's close enough to 30. We call it 30 frames a second.
Now, there is one more thing you need to be aware of. If you go up a little bit, there's an HD 1080. Yeah, that's the right, oh, right frame rate. Look at the eye. The eye means interlaced frames, and those don't have the same integrity as a progressive scanned frame. So don't use the eye. Make sure you're using 1080p 2997. Click it. Good. H.264, 1080p 2997. Now you're going to go to the output name. You're going to tell it where do you want to save it? What do you want to call it? I'm going to save mine on my desktop because I'm not going to keep it. You're going to put yours under documents, students, and then you've got your folder there and you're going to put it in there. Okay. Let me go back to desktop for mine. Um, this is the name of the file. That's too general. That's just the name of the sequence. I don't want that. Use your attendance number, number one, underscore Snyder, underscore grade nine orientation trailer video. And I'm going to say V3 because I've got a V1 and a V2. I've done this a couple of times. Okay, so V3. I'm going to actually say final V3. Final version 3. Saving it to the desktop, it's going to be an MP4, .mp4. The last three letters in the file name always tells the, pro the computer what kind of file it is so it knows what kind of program to open with it. So this is a .mp4 file. Click Save. There we go. All is good. Okay, now we're going to go down to the video tab down here. Hey, there's our resolution, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. That's exactly what we want. Don't scroll by this area here because you're going to end up messing up with some of these settings by mistake doing so. Use the scroll bar here on the right. Frame rate, frames per second, FPS is 2997, which is the same as 30 in our world. Scroll down, keep scrolling down, leave all that stuff alone. Oh, we get to bitrate. So what's bitrate? Bitrate basically defines how much data is flowing when the video file is playing. Okay, the higher the bitrate measured in megabits per second, the higher the bitrate, the higher the quality, but the bigger the file size. And there's an estimate down there. Okay, now great quality is great, but if the file size is too big and unmanageable, that's not as good for us. And do we need a broadcast quality? Is this going on broadcast television on, on a Canadian television channel? No. It's actually going to be used for YouTube posting to your Wix and also just as a file for you to have uh, for your own uh, memory of this whole experience. Okay. So the higher the number, I want you to think of it like this. A higher number is like taking a fire hose with a lot of data. It's, a fire hose has a ton of water flow. Would you use that kind of water flow to water your garden? You'd probably wash everything away. So although it gives you way more water, it's just not the nece necessarily the right amount of water, or in our case, data flowing for our purpose. So we're going to reduce the data flow. What we want is more like the garden hose water flow so we can water our garden. So that's the appropriate, although it's not giving us as much water, it's the appropriate water flow, or in our case, data flow for this purpose. So let's change our target bit rate, megabits per second. Let's say we want it to try to maintain a range of about eight way down megabits per second. That's our target, okay? Now, let's go to the maximum bit rate. We don't want it to hit 40. We want to keep it down to say 10. So we've given it a very narrow window of the bit rate that we want to pick. Between eight and 10 megabits per second for our bit rate. And that'll give us a very good quality Absolutely perfect for our intention, uh, but not the highest quality for broadcast television. Look what it's done to our file size. We're now about a quarter of the size we used to be. So that's sort of the compromise. Lower bit rate, a little less quality, but a smaller file size. Last step here is to hit export. Sorry, before we do that, let's go to use maximum render quality. Render means the actual material. Uh, uh, mathematical calculations as it converts it from a file down here is your project file and converts it into a video. It's going to render this timeline. Use maximum, export, and now it's encoding. Encoding now is the actual work being done. It's actually doing a whole bunch of mathematics in the background. You don't have to do it. The computer does it. And it's going to create the file based on our settings. Now, this is going to keep 
uh, going up. I think it's going to take about 10 minutes to do. I've already done it a couple times, so I know it'll take about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video and pick it up with just uh, 10, 15 seconds left and uh, explain the rest of the process from there. Okay, we're back, and you can see the progress bar here of the encoding process. It's about 10 seconds left. Again, this encoding or the settings are based on what you've set up here. And what we're going to do at the end of this video encoding is the last, very last step is to watch the video that we've exported from start to finish to make sure there's no errors. Here we go. Done. Okay, so again, you've got to play back that video because that's the video you're going to submit and that's what's going to get marked. So you want to make sure that you don't have any mistakes in there like spelling mistakes or maybe a green screen isn't quite cut out as well as you thought it was or audio levels need some adjusting. Bottom line is play back the video. Go to the finder. I'm going to find mine. Mine was version 3. Where's version 3? Right here. Double click it. Open it. It'll open up in VLC. Hi, I'm Samir. We all remember first day of school. Okay, so, so far so good. The title comes in. It seems like just yesterday. Most of us were nervous. Do you see the problem? There's a problem. Can you see it? I'll just play it a bit more. It's because we didn't know what to expect. But thank Look over here. You see that noise there, that gray noise? You see a little bit here, very faint. That's telling me that the green screen ultra key for this intro clip has somehow become misadjusted because it wasn't like that before. So, I know this version is not going to be a good one to hand in because that's going to cost me marks if I was a student. Okay, so what I'm going to do is close it. Uh, what I would actually do is watch the rest of it through and look for other errors as well. Make note of them and then close it. And then you're going to go right back to Premiere Pro and fix your mistakes that you have. And they're not really mistakes, they're just things that need to be fixed. Okay, so I know that the, ex the intro was not good. It wasn't clean. So I'm going to go and look at the intro and I'm going to click on that clip. So I'm looking at the same thing I'm looking at up here in FX controls. I know that that adjustment there, you can see a bit of it there, that that's a result of the ultra key, not the garbage matter motion. Scroll down. Let's scroll down and go to, instead of composite, alpha channel. Oh yeah, see that gray? That's telling us that's not a clean cutout or key, and that'll cost me marks. So let's go see why. There's our settings we did. Oh, pedestal. Remember that? That was the first thing we set. We set that to a, a unit of 90. It somehow got down to 10. Who knows how? But we're going to set it back to 90. Click Enter. Now watch when I do. Watch how this probably goes away. Yep, cleans it up. Let's go back now to, you have to go back to composite before you export this video because otherwise you're going to get a black and white image as your video. You don't want that. Go back to composite. There you go. I'm going to just blow it up, make sure it's nice and clean. 150%. Let's take a look. Let's scroll over. Sorry, scroll down. There we go. Oh, here's the scroll. I'm on the wrong scroll. Nice and clean, right? Okay. So to scroll around in this window, you have to use this horizontal scroll. That's actually the play area. Now, good, looks good. Go back to fit. So I've corrected the mistakes. I'm going to assume I don't have any other errors on mine, nothing else to fix. Um, so we have to re-export it. Click on the timeline, make it active. Make sure there's nothing on the end of the timeline. Nope, nice and clean. I haven't added anything, so I'd expect it to be clean. Check your work area. Snap, take the play bar. Sometimes hard to grab these. Markers click, drag, snap it to the outside of the black. The beginning, it looks good already. So now I've defined the work area. That's good. So it looks like we're good to go. So process all over again. File, export, media, fit. Yep, good. Work area, that's the area. The next step will be that, to turn uh, this actual project markers, file whole video right here good into an actual uh, video a format that can be played on any computer. It says custom anywhere now, now because as soon as you change any kind of a setting down here, it'll change this into custom. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Okay. Um, then you're going to click the name. You do have to click the name again. So I'm going to click on that. This was version three. There's my version three right there. Okay. So I'm going to overwrite it because I don't want to use that one. MP4, good, save. It says, do you want to replace your um, previous final 
version 3 MP4? I'm going to say yes. Before I do, I'm going to quit my VLC so that it's not open and it will let me actually replace this. Replace it. There we go. What do we got here? Some kind of redesigned AR headset. Okay, I'll check that out in, in another life. Okay, so <laughs> there's our settings. Got our name. We've got our save location. Target bit rate is 8 megabits per second. Maximum is 10 megabits per second. Maximum render quality file size about a quarter of what it was originally. So we're all good. All you need to do now is hit export again. It'll do the whole process over. It'll take about 10 minutes probably for your video. And when you're done, what are you going to do? You're going to play it from start to finish all over again because, again, that's the file you're going to submit. And make sure you don't have any errors. That's it for the Grade 9 Orientation Trailer Video uh, Unit that we're doing here. Um, congratulations, you've got to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, process of editing a video and you understand a lot more about it now. And uh, enjoyed the uh, Grade 9 Video Editing Unit.